uh, for the introduction and thanks for still being here. So this is a joint work with Hongkoto and uh, we're investigating the propagation of uh, linear relations through an S-box and uh, we provide a new measure, so a new criterion, um, in order to better understand uh, such type of propagations. Uh, I will start this talk by giving you an introduction in order to, to explain what type of properties we are going to, to look for. Um, then I will introduce the main notion of our paper, that is, we have called this notion uh, PW linearity, that is a new measure for linearity for an S-box. And uh, then we will apply this, uh, this notion to the analysis of uh, four s boxes because the S-boxes are used in very many designs. And finally, uh, we will show how this uh, notion can be applied to explain a um, second pretty much attack that was uh, applied to Hansen uh, in 2010. So in this paper, uh, we're interested uh, in um, iterate uh, constructions where the round function is a simple uh, substitution permutation network and whose uh, nonlinear layer is based on small assets. So ideally, uh, when we iterate the round function several times, uh, after several rounds, uh, normally uh, all output bits should be expressed uh, as in a non-linear way uh, in all of the input, uh, input bits. Uh, however, in some attacks it was found that it was not, not the case. And um, so more precisely, um, it can, can arrive that it can happen that some output bits can be expressed as affine functions uh, of some input bits where the rest of the input bits are fixed to some, to some constant value. Uh, so this uh, is, uh, is of course a weakness for the, for the function and what quantifies this weakness uh, is the sizes of the input and the output sets. Uh, this is because uh, if we have large sets of input and output bits with such property uh, then we will be able to find uh, many affine relations, and these affine relations will be probably can be um, um, uh, can lead to uh, uh, to build a, a linear system, and its solution can, for example, give little circuit analysis. And this is what exactly what was applied in an attack on, um, against the hash function Hamsi in 2010. And such type of properties are also um, used in cube attacks or um, some derivatives of cube attacks. So we show next that the number uh, of uh, affine relations that we can find it depends on a new linearity measure of the f box and we will call this, uh, uh, this measure uh, VW linearity. Uh, before introducing the, the, before the definition of the VW linearity, I will start with an example. Uh, so you, here you can see the algebraic normal form of the Hamsi f box. So this is uh, just a uh, a typical S-box uh, for bit S-box, and it's one of the S-box used um, in uh, the cipher serpent. Uh, so you can see it has algebraic degree 3, and uh, all, the, all the output bits are expressed in a non-linear way in the input variables. Let's see now what happens uh, if we fix all that one variable to some constant value. So here we fix x1, x2, x3, and we give x0. Um, x zero, zero. So, of course, in this case, all of the output bits are just affine functions of the only uh, variable that we have. And uh, let's now see what will happen if we fix, for example, two variables with some constant value. So here we fix uh, x1, x2, we keep x0, x3. So here we see that y1 and y2, these uh, two uh, coordinates, are non-linear in the input set because we have some terms degree 2. However, we still have y0 and y3 um, that are linear in the variables. So we move one step on and now we have three variables and one variable fixed to a constant. So here we can see that almost all output bits are non-linear, uh, but we still have y0 that is linear in the input set that we have chosen. So this is the properties that are analyzing and uh, given a function we want to see uh, if there are any, any spaces, input and outputs, and uh, how many, and of what size, uh, in, in a way that there are some output uh, 
bits that are still linear in their input variables. So for this, in order to explain this, we introduce the notion of BW linearity. So here is a definition. Uh, let S be a vectorial Boolean function with n input bits and n output bits. So we will say that S is VW linear. It will have two subspaces, one input subspace V with dimensional small uh, V and one output subspace W with dimensional small W, such that all the components of the function that are defined by W, so this is the components, have degree at most one on all those cosets of V. So if we want to apply this uh, definition to the previous examples, we see that in the case when we had fixed x1, x2 to some constant value, the function was too, too linear because we had an uh, input space of uh, dimension 2, so because we have two variables, x0 and x3, and we had an output space that was linear on all cosets, um, and uh, um, that was the first and the third, uh, the third coordinate. So, uh, the same way, uh, for the other example, when we had x2 x3 constant, uh, we can see now with the definition that the function is 3 1 linear uh, for, the, for this choice of b and for the first up coordinate. Uh, the first uh, interesting property that was noticed is that uh, the notion of W linearity is uh, closely related to a generalization of the Majoran McFarland construction for bent functions. Uh, I will start also here with an example. So here you can see a Boolean function uh, of uh, four variables and algebraic degree three. And uh, let's uh, take V, this uh, subspace. So we can see that F is 2 1 linear uh, with, um, to this, um, with respect to this, uh, to this uh, input subspace. This we can see because we fix x3, x4 to, to a constant, then clearly it is. Um, so now, if uh, we try to decompose the function and we keep our ways, uh, we keep separately uh, the variables and what we have consider our constant, uh, we can see that we this the function has uh, this form, where here it's just a scalar product. And so, in general, from this type of um, decomposition. We can see that any function that is V1 linear with respect to, uh, to an input uh, subspace V of dimension small v, it can be written in this, this way. So in, uh, here, in the previous example, x is just x3, x4, and y is x1, x2. <coughs> and this form is a generalization of the majorana mcfarlane construction for bent functions. And uh, this... Um, this construction has also been generalized for my, by many people to uh, vectorial functions. So we can prove by using the same type of arguments so that a function that is VW linear uh, for some subspaces V and W, uh, it is if and only if all its components, uh, we, if write all the components uh, just um, vectorial and such a vector that we call as W, it has so this, this form. That is just a generalization of the, the previous form. And um, because, with, uh, because of this link with the Majorana McFarlane construction, um, we can now use the fact that the functions that are um, equivalent to the Majorana McFarlane construction can be described by the second order derivatives. So here we have another proposition that says that function S is VW linear. If and only if all its second order derivatives, the alpha and the beta of this function, where alpha and beta are in the input space B, vanish. And uh, this proposition gives us a very nice and uh, easy algorithm that we can use in order to find all the input output subspaces uh, VW for, for which uh, S is VW linear. And that is what we use uh, in our practical applications. Of course, a function that is VW linear, this has some consequences um, on, uh, on its algebraic degree and on the nonlinearity of the function. So we can prove that a function that is SW linear, um, then all its
its components have degree at most n plus 1 minus v, whereas v is the just a dimension of the input space, and the linearity is superior or equal to 2 to this. Uh, so we see that if the value of v is, is big enough, so the degree decreases and the linearity increases. Um, this proposition is not uh, the inverse doesn't hold in general. So that means that we will have a function with this degree and this linearity. It will not mean that the function is VW linear, uh, but the equivalence holds with, for the special case where V is equal to n minus 1 and W is equal to 1. Uh, next, we will analyze uh, the 4 bit S boxes under the spectrum of this uh, new notion. Uh, why the 4-bit boxes? Because they are used in many symmetric constructions. And uh, what we call uh, optimal S-box is just S-boxes that are optimal against linear and differential analysis. Uh, so in the paper of uh, 2007, uh, Leander and Boschmann, they studied this type of, uh, of functions and they proved that upon uh, affine equivalence, we have 16 classes of optimal for big values as boxes. So what we did here is to study these 16 classes uh, under the spectrum of VW linearity. Here are the results, and I will try to explain uh, this table. Uh, so the first column, you see uh, the 16 different classes, and uh, GIs are the prior representatives of these uh, classes, and we have, we have taken exactly the same GIs as in the paper of Leander and Boschmann. Uh, in the second column, we see the number of quadratic components of the, of the function. And so what is inside is just the number of input subspaces V, such that S is VW linear for some output subspace W. Um, I will not enter in the details for explaining all this, but we can almost explain all the table and you can find the results in the paper. Uh, however, what is nice to notice is that uh, this property depends uh, a lot on the, on the number of quadratic components. So we can see that uh, functions that have, for example, zero quadratic components, they are not 2, 3 linear, and this we can explain this theoretically, uh, and they are not 3, W linear, we can also explain this. Um, what is, uh, and, if, and for functions that have three quadratic components, uh, the situation is much worse, and so they are more vulnerable to, uh, to probably some attacks. Uh, what is in red here, it's just the class where the Hamsey's box belongs into. Um, we will see now an application to, to the Hamsey uh, hash function. Actually, we'll try to explain an attack that was published in 2010 with the notion of VW linearity. So the Hamsey hash function was designed by Osgood Kusuk in 2008 for the Shafir competition. And it was one of the 14 functions that uh, were, um, that were um, uh, went to the second round of the competition. So here we can see the compression function of Hamsey uh, 256. Uh, we have a small um, message block that is expanded to 256 bits. And then this is concatenated with the chain value of the same size. And the permutation P applies to the concatenated state. And then we have a fit forward of the chain value. We will concentrate on the permutation P, that is just a simple SPN construction with three rounds, uh, which is based on the four bit S box that I have used as an example. Uh, so in 2010, uh, Thomas Fur uh, presented in ASICRIT an attack uh, that was at the moment the first attack on the uh, the hash function was second pretty much attack. And I uh, will not, of course, describe the attack here, but the basic idea of it was to find affine relations between some input bits and some output bits of the compression function, and uh, when the other input bits are fixed to some well chosen uh, values. Uh, then, uh, Fuhr used this, uh, these affine relations in order to build a linear system. The solutions of the system gave parameters for the compression function and went after transformed to the second parameters for the, for the, for the hash function. Uh, so here we concentrate to the start of the attack. Uh, so how uh, did you um, uh, find the relations? 
Um, the first step was to choose the variables uh, in the beginning of the compression function in a such a way that they go linearly through the first round. Um, so uh, this was possible. Uh, however, then we had a second and a third round, but to go through uh, two, two non-linear layers. Uh, that, of course, um, would uh, uh, give some non-linear relations. Uh, and what uh, uh, Thomas Fiel did for this case, it was that he noticed the following two properties of the Hamsias box. The first property was that um, the Y0, that's the first uh, coordinate, at only one monomial of degree of non-linear, non degree 2. So if this monomial uh, was linear, had degree only 1, then also Y0 has degree only 1. Similarly, the last coordinate has only two non-linear monomials, so if each of them is, uh, of, has degree at most 1, then this also will be the case for Y3. Uh, so we can now transcribe this in the terms of VW linearity, so this means that Y0 is 3-1 linear for three different paper planes, and Y3 is 2-1 linear for three two-dimensional subspaces V. But, um, as we uh, could see in this table, as uh, the Hamsias box lies in this class, there are actually uh, many, many more relations that one can't exploit. So what we do, so more precisely there are 23 subspaces uh, V of dimension 2, such that the S-box is 2-2 linear, and 3 subspace V of dimension 2, for which the S-box is 2-3 is linear. So, we did an automatic search by using the, uh, the algorithm of the secondary derivatives that I described at the beginning, and so we could find all the possible uh, relations. And we used them to propagate um, some more relations through, second, through the second and the third round, well, together with some of the improvements to the attack. And so what we got is that if we fix nine um, variables in the, in, the, in the beginning, we get 13 of them relations, and this is uh, two relations more than in uh, the original attack. And with 10 variables, we can have 11 of them relations, that's again uh, two more than in the attack of uh, fear. But what is important here is that we actually see that uh, the attack seems really to um, uh, it's, uh, it, it has a relation with uh, the quality of the aspects that is used. So uh, what we ask us ourselves is what happens if we replace this F-box and uh, keep all the other parameters the same and try to repeat the attack. So we did so. Uh, we, uh, for example, for, for the beginning we chose the um, S-boxes that are used in the GH uh, function, that is one of the panelists, the Shapiro competition, that also uses two different four-bit um, uh, S-boxes that, that, that have no uh, quadratic components. And then we chose, um, we implemented again the attack with the S-boxes G3 to G7 and G11 to G13, that was uh, following the, uh, the previous uh, notation. Uh, that also have no quadratic components. Uh, so we repeated the attack, and what happened is the attack was not working anymore because the number of fine relations uh, was not enough uh, to permit to build a linear system. So I'm coming to the conclusion of, uh, of this talk. Uh, we have introduced a new cryptographic uh, property for vectorial Boolean function that will probably be used uh, as a new measure of, of linearity for S boxes. And we have shown that the success of first attack against Hamsi uh, depends on the choice of the S-box. And here uh, we can leave us, uh, we have as an open question, um, if the such attacks as the one uh, meant against Hamsi uh, can be related to other recently proposed attacks, uh, for example, the invariant space attack that was uh, applied against the uh, cipher. So that's, that's all. Thanks for your attention. Are there any questions? And Christina, do you think that uh, ideas a little bit similar to this one uh, could apply to, uh, uh, for example, uh, some ciphers built using uh, feedback chip registers for building linear attacks? Or uh, have you had a look at that? 
I don't have a look at it, um, but I don't know. Probably the problem is that here for Ham it works really well because the number of rounds is uh, is not big. So um, I was I had searching if it would work for actually not for um, but for, for blog ciphers, and uh, still now the response is not positive. But uh, that's probably. But, uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. No more questions? So let's let's thank Christina, Patrick and Amy again.